As I mentioned, this is the third, or the, I'm sorry, the fourth week of our series, Building Brick by Brick. And it's also the second Sunday in October. And I mentioned, I think it was in the, in the community section a couple weeks ago, that we were going to be having, uh, every second Sunday, we'd be having circle conversations with the community, with the church. This is a way to try to rebuild and re-meet um, re each other um, after being away for so long, being in um, COVID shutdown and having virtual church and um, being a, apart from each other. Um, I feel like in this moment, we need to re-meet uh, re each other. We need to um, know who we are, see how we've changed, just um, reconnect with each other. And um, unfortunately, during October this month, we are unable to do that because of some um, things that we have to do after church. Um, but instead of canceling it all together, I thought I'd bring it into the sermon. This is something that I grew up doing. Um, it, well, not grew up, but in my, the church that formed me and shaped me in, in my faith. Um, we did this every now and then, and I wanted to bring it here, a version of it here. But I want to read to us the scripture that is framing our conversation, and that is Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. And this is what is building our entire uh, sermon series around. Nehemiah writes, Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in. How Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates burned? Come, let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem so that we may no longer suffer disgrace. I told them that the hand of my God has been gracious upon me and also the words that the king had spoken to me. Then they said, let us start building. So they committed themselves to the common good. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us start building. That was the call that I thought Nehemiah was placing upon us as a church, universal church and individual church. Let us start to build. We've been separated. We've been fractured. We have been um, taken apart from each other. And there's been no place even more, more effective than the church, interestingly. And that's okay. A lot of things have changed for us individually, personally, spiritually, and communally. And so we have to reconnect with each other and start building this church once again. It might not look like how we left it. It might not look like what we envisioned. But it's going to be something because we have faith that God wants us to be together as a body. And so I talked about we're going to build brick by brick. We have three bricks that we're going to lay into a pattern. And that's going to build the foundation of this church. The first one was prayer. To me, this is the most important piece. Prayer, being intentional about our prayer lives, is something that allows us to develop a relationship with God. It allows us to lay even the most vulnerable pieces of ourselves to God. The second piece was com community, building our community once again. We're going to be virtual, we're going to be online, but we can still build community with each one of these, these elements. We we're going to do that by having our, uh, uh, starting our second Sunday conversations. We had that before the break. Before the COVID break, we had Second Sunday conversations about the church. We're going to continue that now um, by, by doing circle conversations. And then the third element was service. I talked about how service isn't just a side thing that we're going to do. Service is going to be ingrained in our very life of the church. You see, it's one of our core values. For those of, us, for those of you who are visiting us, our core values are what you see around us on the walls. Service is one of our six core values, hearts, our welcoming hearts. Service is the S. It's not just a side piece of what we do as a church. It's not something that we think is just nice to do, charity on the side. Service is going to be ingrained in every piece of this church. And so I've asked Melissa to, to pass around the microphone. Um, I, I thought it would be fun to have a conversation with you all. With you all. If you're joining us online, I have the YouTube stream up so you can po place a question or a thought online. But I wanted to first ask you a question, then you have time to ask us all a question, and we can answer together. My first question is, when you think about laying these bricks, what is it that sticks out to you? What is it about the church and, and these, this, this idea of uh, prayer, community, and service? What is it that really pops out for you in your thoughts? What is something that really sticks, that, that's been on your mind, maybe just now or for a while? Is there any, anybody? You won't be on camera. Um, but we'll be able to hear you, just so you know. Thank you. 
prayer has always been a important part of my life, and I, I, um, I usually pray two or three times a day. And one of the, t- I have to say this, and I have, I pray in my car when I'm driving, and sometimes I say things probably I shouldn't, <laughs> but I say them. In I say, Jesus, please protect that person because they're being an idiot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> things like that you say, but um, I think. It's very, very important, even if you just take two minutes Mm -hmm. here or two minutes there or maybe one second and 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 do that prayer earnestly and and from your heart, I think is Mm -hmm. wonderful. Said a couple of things. One, it's amazing how the the car brings the worst out in us, isn't it? (laughs) The second thing, I have a a teacher right now who told us that anything can be a hermitage and uh, your car is a great place to be a place of prayer. So any place can be a place of prayer in your car, especially when you're on your own. So thank you for that. And um, that's why I put out the the short prompts, spiritual practice prompts every day, every weekday on our social media so that wherever we are, we can just take a moment to um, build a life of prayer. Uh, Joe. Yeah, uh, uh, actually for me, prayer is central. Uh, And I think a lot of people... I'm not saying anybody here, but a lot of people, including me in my younger days, uh, really didn't know very much about prayer. You can hear ministers pray, and they are eloquent. And they say things that, my God, I could never say anything like that. So my prayers stink. Uh, And that's just not true. That God understands everything, no matter how you say it. And there's nothing that's too simple or that's not eloquent enough. Also, there are various kinds of prayers, and I think it's important for people to, maybe as part of a church, maybe as part of church education, to understand the different kinds of prayers, which can be contemplative. Mm -hmm. You know, you sit there and you meditate. That is a kind of prayer. You're opening your, the ears of my ears, Lord, and the heart of my heart to hear what you're telling me. Yes. So just a few random thoughts that I have about that. Thank you, yes. Um, I appreciate that, um, and I appreciate the part about, I think Jesus says something about preaching eloquently um, in public, <laughs> uh, but yes, I think praying silently is powerful. For me, that's the season I'm in. I try to pray twice a day for 20 minutes in silence, not saying anything. Um, I think there are various forms that we can engage in that are very important. Thank you for that. Thank you. Mike came down. Yes, thank you. Yeah. That is eloquent, but it's simple, mm-hmm. and it's elegant, and eloquent, elegant, and it's central. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Any other comments? Yeah. We'll bring you the mic. I don't want to put you on the spot. Would you mind telling me your name? Uh, hi, my name is Risa. Um, Risa. Well, um, thank you. This is our first time here. But Good to have you I feel here. compelled to say this. Um, I'm actually uh, a psychotherapist, so mm. I work with people regularly. So since prayer was touched on, but I went home pretty well for me, so I just thought that um, service is uh, so important as well. Um, I think that I, I know for a fact that when I am focusing on you know helping others rather than myself or w- what I need or that kind of thing, always brings me through, you know, mm. into dark time, difficult times or good times or any time. I'm always, you know, as you are um, teaching and sharing, it's healing as well. So when I always find, as w- like when I'm, another thing, like difficult times, it's like, you know, when you're having a hard time, try to find, h- like help someone else and it always works. Yeah. So thank you. So this is really important. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, it's great for you to be here and thank you for, for sharing. I agree with you. That's what that's what changed my spiritual life is serving. Um, I didn't know what I believed, you know, and I just started to serve, and um, God brought me here, <laughs> which is a circuitous route. But that's the other thing I thought of when Kathy was speaking, and I, it struck me too, is um, I say this often, so you might have heard this, but we can't forget that we have a book of Lamentations in the Bible, and sometimes we forget that. If you've ever read the book of Lamentations or any of the uh, the Psalms, the uh, the Psalms of mourning, um, they're very brutal. If you really read them in their real language. They say some really cruel things and some really bad things to God. Um, but we have to realize that God's so much bigger than us. God can handle, uh, and it's probably better for us if we do share what we're feeling so that we really truly get out 
what we were really feeling to God. Um, and that, that we can't be transformed if we keep things secret and keep things darkened in our hearts. So um, it's good to, to lift um, what we were really feeling up to God in our private uh, praying time. And if you trust a counselor or a spiritual mentor or a pastor, uh, to share it with them. Um, not everybody, <laughs> but somebody that knows how to handle it. it it's a good thing to do as well. Helen? Yes, um, Helen, and I've been with the church forever. Well, <laughs> it seems like. Um, I do believe that prayer is very important with the church, but uh, I also believe that service is very important, and it's not just service to the community, but service to the church. I know that we have, uh, we're building a new board, and we are still looking for servers um, that would like to help us. Um, so I just wanted to bring that. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, it's interesting. I have a, um, so I grew up in the church. My dad was a pastor, and that was a many blessings, I guess. It, it ingrained in me a church rhythm. However, I didn't really appreciate it, and I didn't really want to be a part of it. And um, I wanted to separate myself from anything to do with the church. And there's lingering effects of that. And part of that is um, being bold about asking people and expecting people to serve. So um, that's why I'm glad Kathy is here and Helen is here, because they, uh, they have more uh, ability to do that than I do. But I do think it's important that we serve the, the communities that we're a part of, that we're not just um, taking from the communities. We give back. There's a reciprocity that is required in all of life um, that I believe is... is that's why I talk about nature all the time. I talked about the trees last week, um, that when we see nature, when we see creation, we're seeing God's map of how we were born, we were, be, we were made to live. And um, you can't see nature without seeing reciprocity and taking and giving back all at the same time. That water wheel I said about, we're taking in water, we're giving water out, but it's always churning. Um, and so, yes, service, thank you for saying that and uh, bringing that up. So I read an article about how church is never going to be the same. And they're talking about how um, COVID and the shutdown just accelerated the pattern that we were on as a society. And this article posed the, thing that, uh, the idea that churches need to become spiritual trauma centers. Instead of expecting just everyone to come on Sunday morning at 1030 AM, we need to have more of an effect in, or people feel, um, feel like they're able to bring the, the trauma that they've experienced in their lives, the loss, whether it's loss of family members, friends, loved ones, loss of jobs, loss of financial status, loss of um, regu regular ways of life, whatever it is, we've experienced a lot of trauma as a community. And so the church, um, we can transform into a place of spiritual trauma, a spiritual trauma center, which I think we were originally created to be, if you look at the early church. Um, you look at Oscar Romero in El Salvador, his church transformed into a spiritual trauma center under his leadership, and I think it thrived. But um, what do y'all think about that? How do y'all do y'all understand that? Can you take this? <laughs> That's just a light question to ask. So, <laughs> any thoughts? Is there, is there, are there any spiritual questions anybody has? Is there any... Um, So what is one thing that you would like to have from the church? Let me give us a minute, moment to think. What's one thing that you need from the church in your present moment? Is there something that, that you can really identify in your life? Sense of community. Stephen, <clears throat> I didn't have a church for the entire pandemic because, uh, you know, I'm a church musician and I just moved down here from Albany and uh, the sense of community is like my favorite part about being here. I just feel like already um, I just like being around church people. So it's it's great to be here. And, you know, uh, that's I just wanted to say that real quick in this moment. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for sharing that. It's great to have you here. <laughs> You're a blessing in many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Thank you for getting the word out. I think they call that evangelism in the old church. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. So I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about this for many reasons. We, um, I think that the, what we've laid out, I laid out that it was Nehemiah's plan. We, look, we based the three bricks on the, the service, community, and prayer on the life of Nehemiah, what led Nehemiah to this point to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem after it had been torn down by the Babylonians. Um, he came back as part of, um, after serving the Persian king Cyrus, he came back and he, um, or it wasn't Cyrus, it was the word I can't, King X, <laughs> I, couldn't, I can never pronounce his name right. But anyways, he came back, he felt God was calling him to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that was torn down. And he did it, when you look at it, through a life of prayer, through building community with the people around him to help rebuild it, and through service. The service was um, rebuilding the wall. And I think the, that's why we're using these three bricks to rebuild. And um, I really want to invite you to participate in this. Whether And let us know. I think part of the reason why I want to rebuild community is because look at all the wisdom we have in this room. We have a lot of wisdom. You hear from me all the time, but you don't need to hear from me all the time. We need to hear from you. That's why I want to hear your voice, hear your input, because the church is you. The church is made up of the people who attend it. It's not the building. Like I said, it's not the building. It's not the music. It's not anything that we do. It's you. And so I want to establish a culture as we come back together of community, service, and prayer. But I want us to talk to each other. I want us to know each other. I want us to not just have light banter. I want us to talk about big things, heavy things, and organized ways. That's why we'll have the circle conversations, because we can do it in a way that's organized, that's healthy, and that is a traditional approach. We experienced it once before, and I think we're going to continue to do it. But it's not only Nehemiah's way. When you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus used these very same bricks to build his ministry. He, he, he was centered in prayer. If you read, he's constantly going to the desert. He's constantly going to the mountaintop to pray all night. You saw him before he was crucified in the garden, um, praying, sweating blood as he prayed. You saw him on the cross in constant uh, prayer with God. He was always in community with his disciples. There, was, there were several different levels. There was the level of disciples. There was the outer followers. And then there was the crowds. There were, Jesus surrounded himself in community. And Jesus was always serving people, whether it was someone that needed a, the healing of a hand, whether it was someone that had leprosy that needed healing from leprosy, whether it was spiritual healing with the woman, the adulterous woman, who the people came out to stone because she was caught in an affair. And instead of going after the man, they went after the woman. And the, Jesus saw that and said, you are forgiven, run away, and told the people who were trying to, to uh, throw stones on her that those without stones or those without sins can cast the first stone. Jesus was one of service and healing. And so I think if we build back, we're not only building back in the model of Nehemiah, we're building back in the model of Jesus. And that's what this building was built to do, to live out Jesus' ministry. And so I hope that we can go forth after, um, throughout this season. We're going to go through Advent soon. We're going to go through, um, lead, which leads us up to Easter. As we go through this year, how can we build these, use these three bricks to build and revive the church? I get excited when I talk about it, and I, I just want it to be contagious. I want you to catch that excitement. Because it's not about living in a sanctimonious way where you show how good you are. It's about bringing your full self into this place, your, how you really are, and being transformed by the love, the mercy, the grace, and, and the, the peace of Christ. When we, are tra when we are transformed, we can transform others. If we're not transformed, we can't transform anyone. So I invite you to join me on this journey. Amen. Sorry. Yeah, sure, go ahead. There is also communal prayer, not just by the Father Yes. As you were out and I saw you and there were those around you. And this is the difference between the most Catholic Catholic church, but it's it started as a Catholic church in many ways on the way to that. We can do things like communal centering prayer, which is Yes. Yes. And should be qualified either a service, a practice in service, or something else. But when multiple people get together, mm -hmm. they will pray together. Yes. So that's why I, let me know what you're interested in, and we're gonna do, we're we're gonna install we're gonna do things we're gonna experiment. This is a time of great experimentation. So. Um,
That's why I talk about mother's love. We started with bag, with lunches. Didn't really work. We transitioned to groceries, and it's been we served 205 bags in uh, five weeks. So it's um, we'll, we learn as we go, and so thank you for bringing that up. All right. Anybody? Any other comments or questions? All right. Well, thank you for experimenting in this way. Oh, sorry. Well, welcome. You came a very non-traditional day. <laughs> mm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So just so people can hear, um, the question that, or the comment that he said is that he's, he drives a truck for a living and he finds himself consistently um, in prayer while he's driving. And he's not sure about the religious aspect of it, but he does find himself in praying. And here's what I would say to that. If I had to respond to that, I would say, don't worry about what religion you were doing right now. Religion is an identity that was made by human beings. If you're praying to God, God will deal with if you're truly praying, God answers prayer. God hears the prayers and answers the prayers. And so instead of worrying, I, that's what I would tell everybody. Instead of worrying about being perfect and being, um, making sure you're doing something right in a way that you think is right, do what is authentically you. And God's going to hear you and meet you where you are. Um, that's why I'm a disciple of Christ minister because um, it leaves us open to decide how God is speaking to us individually um, while in community. But um, we don't know. We, the thing I liked about disciples is, is that, that we don't want anybody to tell us what we have to believe um, or, or form of that we, ha that we have to take to, to, to believe. And so um, thank you for sharing that. I think that you're not, uh, you're not alone in that. <laughs> and so thank you for sharing that. Any other? All right. Well, amen. Well, Nate's going to um, lead us into a time of music and then. We will continue on to the table that is a continuous um, form of worship for us here.